Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Riti and I am back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So in the last couple of lectures we learnt about normal firms, how to find the highest normal form and much more things. In this particular video we will be learning on how we can normalize a given relation. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we have already learnt about normalization, types of normal forms and much more things. Now let's see that how we can normalize a table. So in normalization, we generally break or decompose the table into two or more subtables. Now how would that decomposition happen? How would we know that we have to decompose the table and how we should decompose the table? So let's see the steps to normalize a table. So the very first step is we have to write down all the attributes of the table, candidate key, prime and non-prime attributes and start analyzing with the functional dependency. So in the question, we would be provided with a relation and their functional dependency. We have to find out the candidate key, prime, non-prime attributes and we have to start analyzing the functional dependency. So the second step is for the table to be in first normal form, table should have atomic that is indivisible or you can say single values and have a primary key. For the table to be in second normal form, there shouldn't be any partial dependency. So when partial dependency occurs is when LHS is a proper subset of candidate key and RHS is a non-prime attribute. This should be false for the table to be in second normal form. Now coming to the fourth step, that is for the table to be in third normal form, there shouldn't be any transitive dependency. That is LHS must be a candidate key or RHS should be a prime attribute that should be holding true. Now coming to the fifth step, for a table to be in BCNF, LHS must be a candidate key or super key. Now coming to the sixth step, if it fails at any of these steps like second, third, fourth and fifth where we are finding about first, second, third and BCNF, then we have to decompose the table on a common attribute which is a candidate key so that the decomposition is lossless that is data is not lost. So let's understand from a practice problem where we have provided a relation, we have been provided with a functional dependency and we have to see that if the table is normalized or not. If the table is normalized, we will check for the higher normal forms. If it's not normalized, we will decompose it and then again check for the higher normal form. So we will check till BCNF that if the table is normalized or not. So the step one is we have to find the candidate key, prime attribute, non-prime attribute and start analyzing the functional dependency. So to find the candidate key, first we will note down all the attributes of the given relation. Then we will iterate with the function dependency and we will see if the dependent and determinant are present or not. If both of them are present, then we can discard the dependent because it can be determined. So the first function dependency is A determine B. B is the dependent and A is the determinant. Both are present, so we can discard the dependent. So now we are left with ACD. Now coming to the next function dependency, B determine C. So C is the dependent and B is the determinant, but B is not present here, so we have to leave this function dependency. Now coming to where C determines D. So D is also present here and C is also present here. So we can discard D. Now we are left with AC. So from here you can see that A determines B and B determines C. So can we say that A will also determine C from the rule of transitivity? So we can see that A determines C and A and C both are present here. So we can discard the dependent that is C. So we are left with A. And if we take the closure of A, it will give me A, it will give me B, B will give me C and C will give me D. So we can say that A is a candidate key. And now we have to see that if A is present at the right hand side of any of the functional attributes, no, it's not present. So we can say that A is the candidate key. So here candidate key is A, prime attribute are the one which are part of candidate key, so A is here, and non-prime are the one which are not a part of candidate key, so that is B, C, D. So in step two, since we have find out the candidate key, prime and non-prime attribute, we have to check for the first normal form. So since we are assuming that our relation is in standard relational model, it is already in first normal form. So here we can see all the values are atomic only because it is a standard relational model. Now coming to the step 3, that is we have to find for the second normal form. So to check for the second normal form, we have to check that if there is any partial dependency present or not. If it's present, then it's not in second normal form. If it's not present, then we can say it's in second normal form. So coming to the first functional dependency, that is A determine B. A is already a candidate key and the proper subset of candidate key is pi. So we can say that there is no partial dependency as A is not a proper subset of candidate key and B is non-prime. So false and true gives us false. There is no partial dependency. Now coming to B determine C. So B is not a proper subset of candidate key and coming to C, so C is also a non-prime attribute. So LHS must be a proper subset of candidate key and RHS should be a non-prime attribute. So this is true but this is false. So false and true gives us false. 
coming to the third functional dependency c is not a proper subset of candidate key so we can say lhs is not a proper subset of candidate key d is non prime attribute so this is false and this is true so false and true gives us false so this one is also not having any partial dependency so we can say that the given relation is in second normal form now let's check for the third normal form so for third normal form there shouldn't be any transitive dependency that is lhs must be a candidate key or rhs must be a prime attribute this should be true so let's check so first is lhs is lhs a candidate key yes so we can say there is no transitive dependency as lhs is a candidate key and this is an or so this is true so we don't need to check for this now coming to this functional dependency is lhs a candidate key no so we have to check if rhs is a prime attribute is rhs a prime attribute no so we can say there is a transitive dependency as lhs is also not a candidate key and rhs is non prime attribute now coming to this particular dependency is lhs a candidate key no is rhs a prime attribute no so we can say there is a transitive dependency here as well now we have found out that there are two transitive dependencies which are present in two functional dependency so we have to decompose this table so we have to decompose this table a b c d into three tables because here we can see that there are two functional dependency in which there is a transitive dependency so one would be divided in such a way that there is b c and one would be divided in such a way that there is c d and the rest would be left here so that is a determined b so it will be divided into a b b c and c d so now the relation is divided into three a b b c c d where b c and c d were having some transitive dependency before decomposition and a b was not having any transitive dependency now the table is divided into three relation that is r1 r2 and r3 now again we have to check for the third normal form so coming to this relation this was already in third normal form so we don't need to check because a determined b was not having any transitive dependency so coming to this relation where we have b c where b is determining c so we can say that for this particular relation b is acting as a candidate key as b is determining c so now b is candidate key and according to third normal form lhs must be a candidate key so we can say that now there is no transitive dependency coming to this table that is c d now in this particular table c determine c is the functional dependency and now c is determining d so we can say that c is acting as a candidate key so we can say now candidate key is present in lhs so there is no transitive dependency so after decomposition the transitive dependency is removed now we have to check for bcnf but now since the table is decomposed into three tables so we have to check for three of them individually so let's check for the relation one that is ab so a will determine b and a is the candidate key here so since a is the candidate key or super key so r1 is in bcnf now coming to the second relation that is bc where b is acting as a candidate key and the functional dependency is b determine c so since b is a candidate key or super key so r2 is in bcnf because according to bcnf lhs must be a candidate key or super key now coming to third relation cd where c determines d is a functional dependency and c is acting as a candidate key so we can say that this one is also in bcnf so now all decomposed relations r1 r2 r3 are in bcnf so in this way we normalize a relation or a table we generally decompose the table or relation whenever we find out that it's not following a certain normal form so this was all about this video i hope you like this video so if you like this video please hit the like button if you are someone who is new to my channel can go ahead and watch out the tech content first and if you find it useful can go ahead and subscribe also if you have not followed me on my social media handles you can go ahead and follow the links are in the description till then take care keep learning keep growing keep smiling bye